People always ask me, why no solar power out at the cabin? And it got me thinking, why don't I have solar power at the cabin? So I threw down on my first solar panel and portable power station to see if it could replace my trusty 2000 watt Yamaha generator. Will it still work on a cold and snowy day in Alaska? Well, today I intend to find out. All right, y'all, here it is. This is the EcoFlow portable power station. It's uh, the Delta II. I think it's the newest line of portable power stations that they have. It has about a thousand kilowatt storage uh, in the battery. This is actually has a LFP battery in it, I believe, which is like lithium iron phosphate, which I think just has a higher number of times that it can be recharged before it loses capacity. So on the front here, we've just got a display with hours left, percentage, and then it has like some numbers about how much input and output watts are happening. So if we had this thing charging or discharging, it would show us just how many watts. Uh, and then it has like some USB plugins, I guess, like USB chargers. Um, yeah, and then on the back, it's pretty simple. It's just a bunch of uh, power outlets. So this is a lot like my generator is kind of how I'm envisioning it, except just electric instead of having gas in there. And so it has two of the grounded three prong outlets and then four more two prong outlets. This looks like a 12 volt DC, I'm assuming, out, um, like a cigarette lighter. And then so underneath this flap is all of the charging ports for this. So you can plug in a solar panel to it, or you can plug in just regular um, AC power. I know that will charge it pretty quickly from what I've read. I'm not sure how long this will last with all my lights on and running the coffee pot. And uh, if I have the TV on or something like that, charging up batteries, um, it may not get me through an entire day. Uh, we'll see with the hookup of the solar panel. I really don't know what to expect um, in terms of the performance from the solar panel. But um, what would be cool is if I only had to run the generator for like an hour and a half to two hours and then fully recharge this um, power station. And that's kind of what I thought would be the best application. Anyway, I don't know. We'll see. I have no clue what to expect. It does say that it's rated for an 1800 watt uh, output, like a running output. It has a peak output, I think, of over 2000. So like if there's like a, a sudden draw, it can handle that for a brief moment. But in terms of like continuous running, it says up to 1800 watts, um, which is what my generator runs. Uh, so I've always just used my Yamaha uh, 2000 watt inverter. That has a 2000 watt peak, so it actually can't run consistently at 2000 watts either. So in theory, if my 2000 watt generator pushes my cabin no problem, then this uh, should be able to do the same thing. We'll see if that actually happens. I'm gonna get the solar panel plugged in and we're gonna see how much juice we can get from the old sunshine today. So this is the EcoFlow flexible solar panel, which is kind of neat. I think you can kind of bend it um, around certain curves and stuff. It's kind of floppy. Um, it's only a 100 watt solar panel, so really not very much at all. Um, I'm not expecting to keep my cabin running at all times with just this little guy, but I'm just dipping my toe in the water. I've never done anything solar. And I've always wanted to. It's just kind of taken a back seat to all my other projects, especially when my little Yamaha generator just kind of does the job so well. But I think it'd be a lot more peaceful and quiet out here without the generator running. And I also don't have to worry about running back to town and getting gas and things like that as often if I can supplement with a little bit of solar. Anyway, if this goes well, I think I'm probably gonna start trying to build up my solar infrastructure out here and get some more panels and maybe a whole battery bank and inverter. I don't know, we'll see, it'll be a fun journey, but um, I'm just dipping my toe in the water. So this is step one. It's got a little 100 watt solar panel. And uh, yeah, let's plug this thing in and see if we can't find a good spot for it. One of the things you always do in Alaska is build your big windows and view south facing because that's where the majority of the sun comes across. And uh, my porch is south facing. So in the summertime, man, we really get a lot of nice light all across the horizon pointing right at the porch. Up on the roof would be a great spot for solar panels, but the only thing that I was wondering about putting solar panels on the roof though is how I would deal with clearing the snow off and um, if the snow sheds would knock them off of the roof. Just a lot of different considerations. So as we're going along, please let me know in the comments any suggestions or uh, feedback that you have. Um, I'm all ears, this is a super new process for me. But yeah, anyway, let's plug this thing in. I think it's as simple as hooking up this male and female plugs on the solar panel to the male and female plugs on the cable and then plugging it in, so. I gotta say, I'm uh, a little weary of super highfalutin technology stuff out here at the cabin. I like burning wood for heat and uh, engines that run on gasoline, because I know how they work. But it'd be cool to get transferred over to a uh, renewable resource for energy and not have to spend so much money on gas. We plug this thing into here. And it's pretty straightforward. All right. Stand this thing up, facing right at where the sun is at this particular moment. Moment of truth. 
turn it on and see if we're getting any juice. We have an input reading of 22 watts. <laughs> so uh, not a ton. So even just tilting it back a little bit here, it went up to 25 watts. Now 26. All right, as that sun's shining a little bit more, the watts are climbing up. I'm at 32 now. It's pretty cool, man. We're officially charging with solar at the cabin. Boy, I tell you what, I can see how you can get way into this. I'm already thinking like, oh, I could do a big old solar farm right out front here with a whole bunch of panels and batteries and inverters and uh, never have to use a generator again. So I think I can have this thing running my cabin while it's charging with the solar panel. So I can be uh, having watts in and out at the same time. So the solar panel has these eyelets all around the edges. So I think for today, I'm just gonna take a string and tie them through the top ones and hang it off my post here for the porch, which is where it gets the most sun. So for those of you guys who know stuff about solar, one of the questions I have is, can you run these solar connection cables at any distance you want, or is there a degradation in power after a certain distance? So like if I had a bunch of solar panels further down by the pond, would it be a consideration about how far that uh, cabling needed to go? Does it need to be thicker or a special type, or is it non-diminishing? Anyway, anyone who knows the answer to that question, let me know. Nothing fancy, but just a way to hang this thing up. That'll do. And again, this is just a temporary setup, just doing an experiment. But I'll tell you one thing, I think it's pretty exciting. I think I'm gonna do a lot more of this. All right, so I've got the power station just sitting outside the front door. And then I've got the cable sort of snaked through the cracks in the deck, which I'm going to clean up here in a second. And then running up to the panel, which is getting the sun. All right, so here's a test. We're going to plug the power station into the cabin and see what it can do. Okay, so I can tell the fridge is for sure on. So that's a good sign. Yeah, lights on. Look, I hear the compressor running. Freezer. Uh, yeah, so good sign. For sure powers the fridge. Yeah, let's try some lights. Boom. <laughs> Pretty cool. Nice. Lights. Refrigerator's running. Lights and fan are running. Try out this light over here. Pretty much the whole cabin turned on. I got another light over here. I gotta say, the whole cabin's running and the generator is off. It's totally quiet out here. Now, how long will the battery last with all this stuff plugged in? I don't know, we'll go outside and look and it should give me an estimate on how many hours it has left. Keep in mind, it's still pretty much winter here in Alaska. It's 15 degrees outside and uh, it's the first week of April. So in a few weeks, we should start seeing a lot more potent sun in longer days. So hopefully this whole solar harvesting will just get better and better. So let's go outside and see with all of the lights and fan and uh, refrigerator running, just how much energy we're consuming. All right, so our output watts right now is at 179, and our input is at 34. So our solar powered input is uh, not nearly enough to power the entire cabin simultaneously. And at this rate, it says that the battery will last for another three hours, but that's also because I only have it at 45% charged. So I'm gonna turn off the refrigerator and some of the bigger lights and turn the fan down to a lower setting and see what that looks like. Okay, so with the refrigerator off, the overhead lights off and the fan to a lower setting, um, I'm now down to an output of 29 watts, which is less than my input. So in theory, I should be able to run continuously uh, as long as the sun stays relatively out. I do still have my main lights on, the one over top of the dining room table and the standing lamp in the corner. Uh, and of course at night, I'm not gonna be getting any power from the solar, but I also won't really be using any. Pretty much everything's turned off at night. Uh, I'll keep the fridge on, so that'll actually draw on it, I guess, to keep the fridge cold. Pretty cool. After the battery gets a little bit lower, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fire up my generator and see how long it takes to charge 
that power station with the generator power. So I don't know a ton about electricity, but one thing I do know is that any kind of uh, electric heat source draws a ton of power. So a coffee pot is actually gonna be a really big draw on whatever power source you have. So this will be fun. I've got the fridge turned on. You guys can see that there's light coming on in the fridge. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click the on button on the coffee pot and see what happens. Boom, no problem. Didn't see any lights flicker, nothing. That's pretty cool, I'm impressed. All right, so it's getting sunnier, and I don't know if the solar panel can pick up the sun's reflection off the snow, but my eyes sure can, so I have a feeling that all this snow is helping to um, draw in some extra watts on the panel. But anyway, now that it's got a little bit more full sun, now we're sitting at 60 watts coming in. So we're still not at the capacity of the 100 watt panel, but 60 watts coming in is pretty decent. All right, so I've been running the EcoFlow power station all afternoon. It wasn't until about, I don't know, seven, eight o'clock that the solar um, stopped doing any charging. Um, in the amount of time that it was charging that with the fridge running and a light running, it didn't actually lose any charge. It stayed at 46% charge that whole time. The peak solar input that I was able to get was 80 watts. And that was when the sun was totally unblocked by clouds shining right on the solar panel at about five o'clock in the afternoon. I did just discover something though. My oven, which is a propane oven, actually draws a lot of electricity to run, which is interesting because none of the heating elements are actually electric, but I know that it has to have electricity because of certain safety features. Um, but apparently it draws a lot of electricity to run the oven, which I didn't realize would be the case. Um, the good news is, is all of that's totally working, powering fine, none of the lights flicker. It actually seems to have a better like surge reaction than my generator does. The generator runs on an eco throttle, and so when it asks for power, it will rev up, but there's that split second where the engine hasn't kicked on hard enough to accommodate that, so you kind of get this uh, lull in the lights. But the portable power station obviously doesn't have that problem, so instant power. And I also don't know how the cold is affecting the battery. It does say specifically in the operations manual that you're not supposed to run this eco flow at below um, I think 14 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's definitely around 14 degrees, if not colder right now. I think we're gonna see single digits tonight. Um, so I'm just gonna put this thing to the test and see what it can do uh, below its rating. It's probably gonna be fine. Uh, but another cool thing that's happened since I last talked to you guys is I figured out that there's like an app on your phone that tells you exactly what's happening with it at all times. So you can see on there, it shows you how much battery percentage is left, which right now there's only 10% left and then the input and output. Right now it's pulling 30 watts. Anyway, before this thing dies, I'm gonna run out and gas up my Yamaha generator. This will be nice to uh, avoid these late night trips out to the generator to fill up the gas if I can get this power station working. In theory, running this just for an hour or so should get me back to full charge. Okay, it's definitely pulling power in now. It's pulling in 600 watts of power. And now we'll turn our AC back on. And voila! <laughs> All right, let there be light. Okay, cool, so got the generator started. And I have it plugged in to the power station and then the power station is plugged in to the cabin. That's really nice to know that you can run the power station while charging it. And it's pulling in a lot of watts right now from that generator, it's at, uh, 760 and climbing. Um, okay, so I just want to track. It's 1015 right now. We're gonna see how long it takes to go from 10% all the way to fully charged with the generator charging it. It says one hour and 54 minutes to fully charged. It's exciting. I had harvested the logs from a stand of spruce less than 300 yards from where they were now piled. All right, good morning, y'all. So here's some numbers on what was taking the most electricity. Um, to give you guys an idea, my LED lights, uh, when I've got two or three of those on, is averaging about 30 watts. The refrigerator, when it kicks on, peaks at about 100, but then settles down to about 80 watts. The biggest draw and the most surprising one, I think I told you guys last night, was my oven. But I think my guess is that it has something to do with the pilot light. So you don't light a pilot light in there. So there must be some sort of, um, like, heated coil, maybe, like a, uh, an ignition that's just like a heated coil because the only thing I could think of that would be taking that much electricity must be some sort of heating element. So if you guys know um, sort of the science of those ovens and what element of it would be causing it to draw 400 watts of electricity, please let me know. Let's see, the ceiling fan um, on its highest setting, it was about 80, 
And then when I put it on the medium setting, it was about at 50. And then when I put it on the low setting, it actually was only drawing like five or six watts. And that's just a really low, slow um, spin. So it's exponentially more as you turn the ceiling fan up. The TV was running at about, similar to the fridge, about 80 watts, I'd say. And then uh, plugging in phones and cameras and charging, things like that was a really minimal, almost negligible amount of watts coming out. This is a game changer for me. I think that having the peace and quiet of no generator running is just absolutely phenomenal. So, and I'm also saving tons of gas. All right, well, as you can see, it's kind of a snowy, cloudy day. Uh, it looks like my solar panel isn't getting any draw from the sun. Uh, let me know if you guys think that's normal for a kind of an overcast day. I mean, it's definitely bright outside. In the meantime, it's nice to enjoy the snow. All right, so a quick summary. I've been using this for about three days now, and it's performed really great even out in the cold temperatures. It seemed like I could get at least 24 hours, but more like 36 hours out of one charge. Using the basics around here, like uh, LED lights, my refrigerator. Uh, I, I had the TV going last night. I watched a Dick Pernicky Alone in the Wilderness DVD. Uh, coffee pot going and the oven, I'm charging up all my batteries, things like that. I even turned on the Christmas lights around the cabin last night. So obviously the 100 watt solar panel isn't really going to um, do the trick out here for providing a consistent source of power. So in the last three days I've ran my generator about three to four hours, which is amazing. Um, I've really enjoyed the peace and quiet out here and I've enjoyed not having to go out and fill up the generator with gas. That's a, that's a bit of a chore that um, I would prefer not to do. This just motivates me to want to get into a bigger solar setup. But um, this is great. Like I said, I wanted to get this just so I could take it camping and be portable and just um, just figure out kind of how these things work. Please let me know in the comments what your guys' expertise is with these things, especially if you've used solar in uh, cold, dark climates like Alaska or Canada. Um, I'm really curious to know what kind of tricks of the trade you guys do and if you're able to get a charge when it's really, really cold and really dark. Pretty soon I'm going to be starting my uh, bunkhouse build as soon as the snow melts and I'm going to be uh, trying this thing out with actual power tools and seeing what it can do with like a chop saw and a circular saw. Alright, so that's all I have to say on this for today. I'll check back in on this in a couple months and let you know how it holds up. And uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you all in the next episode of Alaska Cabin Adventures. Mm -hmm.